it's good to be back in the house of the Lord this morning. And we'll turn your Bibles to the book of Galatians 5. morning about uh, our redemption and draw of nigh and to it. And the Bible says to lift up your, lift up your eyes and look because it's near. And uh, this morning we uh, was reading in uh, Galatians and we decided we wanted to teach this and it says uh, here to stand fast. And uh, that's one of the things that I believe is pleasing to the Lord this morning is as we stand fast. And, uh, and that we keep our eyes looking towards the east of the, the, for the Lord Jesus Christ to come. Uh, he's coming one of these days, and uh, I'm, 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 uh, uh, I'm hoping maybe that I'll be here, but if not, well, I'll see him when I come out of the ground. But anyway, this morning, in this, in this, this year, Paul is writing to these, and he wrote several places in here about this. Uh, uh, he uses the leaven as, as an example of sin. And so this morning we want to try to study just a little bit on standing fast and, the, and that. And so in, uh, in, in verse 1 of chapter 5, it says, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Now this liberty that he is talking about is freedom from the law. Hmm. Because... They were under the law, and uh, they couldn't keep the law. They couldn't serve God, and uh, everything that they was doing was against God because they wound up as worshiping idols and all the things of the world. But here he says, "Here stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, or then uh, uh, in the uh, uh, the uh, liberty of, of God that He for with Christ has made us free." And he's made us free from the law. And we are not no longer, and, and this is not new stuff to any of y'all, because we know it, but I, I, I teach this this morning with hopes that others may see it out there that has never heard of, the, of being free from the law and what it, the Bible teaches. And it would encourage others out there that, that listen to this to... Uh, if, if you have an opportunity and you know about the law, you might tell someone else about it and help them to understand. But the law was it for the Old Testament and uh, uh, Jesus Christ came to this world to fulfill the law, which he did. And we know that this morning and he fulfilled it and he was the only one that could fulfill it. And he was the only uh, one that could have been sent because he was sent of God. Amen. So this morning, he says here, he says in this, stand fast therefore in the liberty, wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not, be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. The yoke of, the yoke, yeah, the yoke of bondage. And this morning, I, I look at this word entangled, and you know, so many times, uh, we get entangled at the, get out into the fields or the woods or something like that or mowing or something. You get out there and get into the uh, little, little vines and all and, and you know how it is when you get to stumbling and pulling and all this. Well this is what the Bible is warning us against this morning. Not to get entangled again with this world and the love of the world. Right. You know, because listen it will it will it will keep you from serving the Lord. Right. It will hinder you in all kinds of ways. But he says, he says here, he said, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. And why he uses this word again is because they were entangled with the law, and it was a bondage to them in a certain way because they could not they could not please God by trying to keep it. So he's he's war Paul is warning them not to get back into this thing of worshiping uh, uh, idols and things of this nature, which they did. But in, in, the, in the book of Acts, here we're going to read just a minute, just a little bit here, in Acts 15, and uh, you know uh, some of the things that we want to try to read here this morning, but it's, uh, it's something that we need to understand about this. In Acts 15, verse 7, notice here. Acts 15, verse 7. 
And when there had been much disputing, and of course this is when they were disputing about the law and all of this, uh, in verse 7, and when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good, that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by much, by the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And this is when that Peter was with Cornelius there and, uh, and he had the vision and he seen the, the vision and seen the sheep come down and, and, uh, and of course he heard the voice saying, don't uh, rise up Peter, uh, kill and eat. And of course that was against the law to kill, to eat uh, four-footed beef or four or split hoof feet animals that had a split hoof and things of this nature so but he said no lord i've never done this but god made it plain to him what what he was trying to get across to him what i have made call not thou unclean right now that gives us this morning the freedom that we can eat uh different types of animals and and, and fowls and things of this nature without it being a sin to us and we were not under the law. And so he said here in verse 7, And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, Amen. even as he did unto us. And of course, right after that, she went, uh, but right before that, uh, one of the two, I can't remember. He, the Holy Ghost, the, the church was baptized with the Holy Spirit there. And it says in, in verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. So when faith come in, the law left out. It was no longer, it was no longer the thing that you did uh, to try to say, save or try to get saved. And, uh, and, and, and those that were trying to get saved, or that live like they should, they weren't saved because we know this morning that they went to Abraham's bosom and they stayed there until such time as Jesus could, after his death on the cross, went down there and preached to them salvation. They accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior and he took them out and, and carried them away to heaven. And so this is the reason why he said this uh, and, the, and uh, in this year. But uh, here he says here, uh, now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke, and the yoke that he's referring to was the yoke of the law, upon the necks of his of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Then all the multitude keep sil kept silent and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon has declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this to agree the words of the prophets as is written, as written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the, the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things, known unto God, Known unto God are all this, these His works from the beginning Amen. of the world. So here is this is it. Nineteen. There, therefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from polluting pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. For Moses of the old times and in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues on the Sabbath day then please the apostles and all the elders 
And I'm going to read the rest of this whole slide here. I'll return. The church to send chosen men to the, it pleases the church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barnabas, and Silas, chief men among the brothers. So this is this is why this morning I wanted to read this about Acts, what had happened here, and we know this morning that uh, you that are listening this morning, you can you can go back to the uh, study in Acts there and understand what happened to Peter as he was as he was uh, uh, out uh, visiting, and he was up, went upstairs and went to sleep, and he got hungry and he had this vision. And so this is the starting of the doing away of the law because that uh, Cornelius uh, and an angel appeared to Cornelius and telling him to do all of these things. So this is why this morning that the law, people do not keep the law first. And keeping the law is not the way to salvation. Right. Keeping the, the law is a good a good thing for a person to try to do, but not for salvation, because it's for by grace are you saved through faith. Right. And that none of yourself. So this is it. Now back in our lesson in, in Galatians five, he says, notice in verse three. <clears throat> No, let's see, Paul, Paul in verse 2. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, and this is this was the this was the outer appearance to show uh, that you had accepted the law. Circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Right. Okay, so for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. But yet, if he did the whole law, listen. It, here's the thing of it. The, he was not saved, but he went not to hell, but he went to Abraham's bosom. And this is where that the rich man went to, and this is where Lazarus looked over and seen the rich man begging for water. Mm -hmm. And this is where he, uh, the, 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 uh, the rich man was uh, there in hell, and Lazarus was looking over and seeing the, the rich man. But, so uh, Abraham bosom was a place of containment until such times as they could hear grace preached to them like the, the Gentiles preach grace today because grace, like I said while we were there in Ephesians 2, is for by grace are you saved. It's Amen. not by works. It's, not, it's nothing that you can do this morning in the way of physical labor or anything to be saved of God because that's not his plan. And so Paul in verse 2 uh, 3 says, for I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor. He must do it. He must do this, a debtor, to do the whole law. Right. And so this is the reason why that none could ever be saved by the law because there was only one person that ever come to this earth in the form of a man and kept the law, and that was Jesus Christ. He kept the law, and he was the perfect sacrifice. Amen. He was willing to go to the cross and pay the death penalty for us spiritually that we could be with him in heaven. So here it is. Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. And I, 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 the only thing that I can tell you about this right here is, uh, I don't, I don't believe the Bible teaches that you can fall from grace. But this is the way that that, that he wrote it, trying to get their attention. But listen, here a person that is in this condition has never knew Christ. He's never been saved. Mm -hmm. He's he's been de he's been deceived. And and he's never he's never he's never been saved. And so here here in verse five, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. And so this morning, uh, the law the law never done anything. For in verse six, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. Amen. I want you to see something this morning in 
First Thessalonians, I believe it is, uh, verse 1. of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the light of God and our Father, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. Amen. For our gospel, the goodness, is what he's talking about, came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake, and ye became followers or ministers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with, the, with, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia, and from and for ye, from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith of God and work is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything, for they themselves show us, show of us what manner of enter, entering in we had unto you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to quit and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus Christ, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Amen. And so this this tells us this morning, and I wanted to read this because it says from the wrath to come. Listen, there was a wrath, there is a wrath, there is a wrath for an unsaved person. Amen. But the wrath was for the world because the world was in sin. And and Jesus Christ came and uh, whom Jesus uh, he died and whom God raised from the dead and deli delivered even Jesus which, del which delivered us from the wrath to come and so Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and he delivered us from the wrath to come mm -hmm. now back in our lesson this morning maybe we can uh, get these things going and, and we can be a blessing this morning now <clears throat> uh, in first I believe it was in first uh, uh, seven. You did run well. Mm -hmm. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now listen, this this thing you did run well. This uh, covers a whole lot of things. But and we ourselves this morning sometimes we we fall in this category when we get uh, in a cold backslidden condition. And we have to hear these things saying, but you did run well, who's hindered you? Mm -hmm. And listen, this world, this world hinders us. Uh, our, old, our old bodies hinder us. Our old tempers hinder us. Our old tongues hinder us. And listen, there's so many things our eyes hinder us. And we let this go on and go on and go on. But it is the flesh that's hindering us because our spirit is saved. And so our flesh is hindering us. And so he said, you didn't run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? Now notice, this persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you a little leaveneth, leaveneth the whole lump. Mm -hmm. But I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, I yet preach circumcision, 
why do I yet suffer persecution? Mm -hmm. Then is the offense of the cross cease. I would, they were even cut off, which trouble you. And this morning, there were so many people uh, hindering the, the Christians, uh, even trying to get them to go back under the law. And, and here he's, he's asking them, you did, you did run well. And he's, he's pointing out to them that they were hindered by these, these cults and these uh, statue of the worshipers and all this. So uh, in 1 Corinthians, I would, if you would turn there just a minute, 1 Corinthians 9. I'm going to read just a little bit to you if I find it real easy. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. They which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. Amen. And, 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 and this here he's telling these people who did hinder you, and then he's a give them, giving them this advice that, that you, you should run uh, in the race and try to win the race or be win the prize. In other words, stay in tune with the Lord and stand still and listen to what God and the Holy Spirit has to tell you and not what false prophets has to tell you because he's saying this, know ye that know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. And so this morning, I, I'm assuming those that run the race the true way is what he's trying to say here, uh, is the ones that obtain the prize. And that the, uh, the prize is when you stand before the Lord God of heaven and uh, uh, at the judgment and, and receive your rewards. Uh, and he says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what he's saying here this morning. So this is something that we should keep in mind this morning, that we're going to stand before God, and we're going to receive the rewards of, of the things that we've done here upon this earth, if it be in the will of God. And so this is something that we need to look forward to this morning, because he says, uh, I therefore, in verse 30, uh, 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertainty. In other words, you be certain when you're running in this race that you're running in the right race and you're running for the right prize. And so he says, I therefore so run, not as uncertain. So I, so fight I not as one that beateth the air. And, and, and you can see, uh, uh, when he's saying that beat at the air, I, I've, I've seen people that run, try to run these races and they get so, so weak and all that, just flinging their arms and all this, and they're out of breath. And so he says, he says, here, therefore run, therefore so run not as uncertainty, so fight. I not as one that beat at the air, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, or into subjection, lest by any means when I have preached to others, I find I, sh I, I myself should be a castaway. And he's talking about running a race and how he runs it and how he conducts himself as he preaches a lesson or as he preaches a message. And listen, he says here, I keep my body, uh, keep under my body and bring it in subjection. I control my body. I keep it under subjection and I, and I don't go there to to uh, preach a message. I don't come to you and preach a message for what I can get out of you, uh, Paul is saying, or, or the pat's on the back, but he says, I keep my body under subjection. And he says, I keep it under control. And he says that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be the castaway. And so this is, this is the thing that Paul is encouraging uh, them to do this morning is running the race and, and, uh, and uh, 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 preaching the message that should be preached. So back in our lesson, Chan, uh, again, in Galatians 5, we'll, we'll finish up in just a few minutes. Uh, this persecution, in verse 8, this persecution cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaveneth, leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye 
will be not otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And so this morning, a good thing that we need to understand, look at, this morning when people trouble us and aggravate us, uh, and you can use Jesus Christ as an example, they spit on him, they pulled his beard, they, they mocked him, and they killed him, and listen, he did not he did not go back on them, and he did. He could have killed every one of them, but he didn't say anything that, that, that was against them. But he says here, uh, here uh, in this uh, again. Let me let me get back to where I'm at. But I would they that were even cut off was trouble you for brethren. You have been called unto liberty. And there's that liberty again. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh but by love serve one another. And he's, he's warning us about using this liberty of, uh, that we have the liberty of God, that he has saved us and he has, he has assured us that we are his. And he says, don't use that liberty uh, uh, wrong. And I, brethren, if I, in, verse, in, in verse 11, and I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross ceased. I would, they were even cut off, which trouble you. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use that, not that liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed one of another. And that's, that's his next thing is walking in the spirit. And uh, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And so it's uh, the time is up this morning and I've been here and there and a lot of reading, but uh, there's, there's some things there that maybe will, will remind us and encourage us and bring to remembrance some things that we uh, let slide sometimes and there may be uh, some I hope that there is after listening this morning that will uh, uh, get enough uh, desire to go into the Bible and start trying to read some of this or follow some of this because uh, we uh, we got a lot of people out there that's, that's uh, lost, we got a lot of people out there that's listening and uh, maybe we can be a help uh, to them. Thank you. Bad.